Okay, so you want to get started in ZBrush. Well, that can be quite a daunting thing, but hopefully this video will help you to get started. Here we go. This video has been made possible by BenQ. If you're a digital artist in need of a professional monitor, then check out the link below. Okay, everybody, so ZBrush, uh, daunting, right? Yeah, I know. Well, uh, one of the reasons why it's so daunting is because ZBrush has a complicated user interface. So hopefully I can help you with that today, right? Now, first of all, what is ZBrush? ZBrush is a digital sculpting program for the most part. It will help you to create characters, animals, uh, fantasy figures, and so forth, uh, put in fancy organic detail into hard surface objects, and so on and so on. Now, you can do hard surface modeling with ZBrush, uh, but I'm not going to cover that because you've got so many other programs that will do that. So we're going to focus on sculpting, okay? Right, so I got ZBrush 2020. You can use any version you have. And that said, we open it up and you will probably see something looking like this as you open it up for the first time. Now, what is that? It's basically a drop down menu called Lightbox with a whole lot of options you can work with. And that is all stuff that we're not going to cover today. It's way, way, way too much. And don't worry about it, right? So we're just going to shut that down by hitting Lightbox again. And here we have our canvas. Okay. So let's get sculpting. Okay, here we go. So wait, what's all that? That doesn't look like sculpting at all. Well, correct. It's not sculpting. This is called 2.5D. Now, I have no idea why ZBrush put that in there. Um, I don't even know any people that use it. But I'll tell you this though, when you see this happening on your screen, you forgot something, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back, hit Control Z, or better yet, I'm gonna teach you something that you're gonna use a lot in the beginning, and that is to reset things. So you're gonna go up to the top, go to Preferences, Initialize as you brush. Click on Yes, wait a sec, and there you go, ready to go. So the reason why you saw that is because I, was, I wasn't in edit mode and I didn't have an object to edit in the first place. So let's bring that in. I'm gonna go and click on that big S right here. And there we go. And I'm gonna go in and click on Sphere 3D, that circle. Okay, so where is it? Well, you need to uh, create it on the screen first. So I selected that circle and now if I click and drag that out, I will get that sphere. There you go, right? Now, I still can't edit this because I need to do two things. I need to go up here to edit, click on that, and I need to go up here to make Polymesh 3D and click on that. And as I do that, you'll see that the menu down here will change. Now, you see this line on the screen there? That's basically my floor plan. And depending on the version of ZBrush you have, you might see that little face guy up there in the top uh, right corner, right? Right there. And you can see that I'm looking at the front view right now because the little guy is looking at me. Now I wanna get this upright and straight. So I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna snap it like that, right? And that's how you snap to a certain view, front, left, and top and so forth. So I got that going on, okay? Now, um, because I have this sphere, I now have the option to start sculpting it. But how do I navigate, right? If I can't navigate, I can't sculpt. So I already showed you by holding down my pen or my mouse and just moving it around, you can freely move it around like this, right? If I want to snap to a certain view, I'll hold down shift. So snap, 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 there you go. But what if I want to pan, hold down the alt key and you can do this. Now the very, very weird one. What if I want to zoom in around, okay? Now what you do is you hold down the alt key, you click on your screen, you start moving it and then you release the alt key. And as you do that, it will go in or out. It's, uh, you know, it's something you have to get used to, but once you know it, it's kind of something that works okay, right? Okay, so move it around, hold down shift to snap it to certain views like so, hold down the alt key, release the alt key and pull in or out. All right, so now that we have the basics down for navigation, we can get sculpting, right? Okay. So we got the edit button ticked, we got the make polymer 3D ticked, and then we got a couple of important things up here. We have a draw size right here, that we can drag them down. And looking at that red circle that you can see right there, right? If I make that bigger, the circle becomes bigger. If I make it smaller, it becomes smaller. That makes sense, draw size, right? And then we've got focal shift. 
and that controls that red circle on the inside. So you got all the way there or all the way there. Now I'll show you the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush and I'll explain that later. And it's called a move brush in this case. And I want to move geometry. So I got my draw size, at, let's say uh, 250. Come on, 250, yep. And focal shift is at zero, right? Okay, so I'm going to pull that out. Now I'm going to move the focal shift all the way to the left. That looks quite different, doesn't it? And now I'm going to move all the way to the right. And you can see that it very much ties into the de-affected area, right? So you got the, um, the area that you want to control, which is the brush uh, size. And then the, uh, the focal shift is kind of where the emphasis is. Is it in the middle? Is it more to the edge and so forth? And then finally you have the intensity, right? So if I push down the intensity to one, not a lot going on. If I push the intensity all the way up, you see down there, I got some activity, right? Okay, so let's go back a few steps. Control Z, go back, 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 back. And as I move back, you see that yellow thing going on here? So I can go all the way to the right, all the way to the left, and kind of scrub through my history like that, okay? So I'm at the beginning. Hold on shift to snap it. And now I know the brushes and the focal shift and the intensity. Now I also have the option Z add and Z sub. Z add as in add geometry to my sphere, Z sub as in subtract geometry. Okay, so I'll show you. I'll get a nice big size here. I'm gonna take another brush, and this is my brush menu up here. Click on brush, and then go in here, and I'll do a clay brush, and I'll explain that later, don't worry. Okay, so if I start to brush right now, you're seeing that I'm adding geometry on top. Okay, now let's go to C sub. Now I'm suddenly cutting into my geometry, as you can see. Okay. Now, if you want to play with that all the time, what you also can do is you set it default to Z add like this. And when you want to subtract, you just hold down the alt key. And without the alt key, with the alt key, without, with. Okay. And again, control Z to go back. And there you go. All right, then, and this is kind of a jump, but I'll just uh, mention it quickly. Uh, as we uh, move forward and we talk about sculpting, you also have the option to choose different materials. So I got this red clay going on here. Click on that. And I can go in here and choose basically any material I want, right? So I got this guy right here and the material will change. And then I can go in here and I can change the color by simply clicking on any color I want. Okay. So let's just uh, put that up basically to white. Now on the right here, you have all sorts of options. And what I'll do is I'll just um, reinitialize here and I'll load something in. So let me go to my light box. And here's a helmet that I did a while back. Click on that. Let's have it loaded. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the P key on the keyboard. And you see something really funky going on there, right? And as I hit the P key, you'll also see that here, this icon right here, it says perspective. So you have the option to switch between perspective view and orthographic view. Now, when you're sculpting, it can make a big, big difference which one you're using, okay? So you got perspective on right now, and it's off just your choice okay now you got other options here as well if you click on this guy right here you can have your uh, wireframe basically turned on and you see your poly groups you can turn that off okay and then one other thing that's pretty cool is symmetry so let's say I want to change something on the right ear and I want the same thing to change on the left ear what you would do is you would hold on X on the keyboard now, if I tap X now you see I got two of these dots going on right and as I start to do something, you'll see it will work both ways. There you go, right? Let's go back. Okay, so let's see, recap. So we talked about how to get an object in, right? And you can either go into here, um, the big S, let me just uh, initialize that again, just so that we're on the starting page. So you can go to that S, take a sphere, drag that out, right? And then go up, hit edit, and hit polymesh 3D, 
move this guy down and hold down shift as you do that to snap that okay you got the brush size that can you make bigger and smaller you got your focal shift to make um, the impacted area within that circle uh, bigger or smaller you got your intensity and you got add uh, uh, geometry or subtract geometry okay so we have all that covered now next thing i want to cover is the geometry itself now up here there's a very important number it says active points 8066 now if i click on this guy right here you'll see that this is my wireframe okay now what happens if i hit Control d Control d increases my sub count Okay, right? so look at this number up here, 8066. I'm gonna hit Control D. It's gonna to go to 32,000. Once again, 137, 520, and so forth. Now, why is that important? Well, if I want to move something, and I'll just go up to my brush again, and instead of clicking on this and then go and looking for it, I'm gonna use a shortcut, right? So I'm gonna hit B for brush and then M for move. So I only get this one that starts with an M. Here's my move brush, click on it. Right, so right now I have 520,000. So I'm pulling on that, right, as you can see. Let me turn this off. Okay, so now let's go back to 8,000. And you'll see that it's much rougher. You see those lines going on, right? Now, so what you typically wanna do is when you're working on blocking out a model, you start at a very, very low number. So if you are just trying to get an initial shape going on here, right, of whatever you're creating. So let's say we're gonna do this and then we'll kind of make a weird looking head or whatnot, right? All right, and then we'll uh, move this out. Okay, now you see that that's all incredibly rough, right? However, if you hold down your shift key and you go over that area, look what happens. It smooths that out, right? So you could be working on a head like that. Now, once you have the blocked out the big rough shapes, like the ears and the nose and so forth, you bump up the geometry level a bit, right? And then you go on and on and on. And you wait until the very last moment before you make that very high, because you know it makes your system quicker and uh, you don't have to move around millions of dots, okay? So let me go back. And I'm just thinking whether this is enough for you to get started. Um, yeah, we'll do one more. Okay, so uh, I took that um, sphere, right, when we started. Now, if we move this around, and I'll just turn this on, you see we've got that little weird thing on the top there that you typically have on a sphere, right? Now, when it comes to sculpting, that can be a problem because once you start to move that, right, what is that gonna do with your points? So instead, and you would have the same problem in, let's say, in Maya or whatnot, what you wanna do is you want to have a sphere without that. Now there's a thing here called um, geometry and under geometry you have a thing called Z remesher. So let me show you that. We're gonna to go to geometry on the right. We're gonna scrub down and here it says Z remesher. Okay. And once you click on that and down here it says target polygon count five, which is a level, right? We're gonna click on Z remesher and look what happens. It's gonna work on that and boom, it's gone. So basically what ZBrush did is it took the object and it made a complete new mesh layout for that object, right? So now you got 4,366 and you don't have that distortion anymore on the top. Now this can come in handy if you have made, let's say a, a low poly model in Maya and you brought it into ZBrush and it doesn't work out that great, you can remesh it, right? Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's see, and then finally, because I think it's a lot of information for a first video, we're gonna talk about Dynamesh. All right, so let's go back in here. Preferences, initialize, and okay. Starting from scratch, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna take a new sphere. We're gonna drag that out. We're gonna click on edit. We're gonna click on um, make that, scrub up, make Polymesh 3D. I'm gonna move this around, hold on shift to snap it and get to the front. There we go. Fine. Okay, so if we hit this guy, 
we're going to see our current setup, right? Okay, now, what happens when you start to move this around is you will have faces get very distorted, okay? So I'm going to hit B for brush, M for move brush, click on move, make that nice and big, turn on symmetry by hitting X, and right now I've got symmetry in the X uh, orientation, and you can change that, by the way. Um, if you go in here, I think that's the one, yeah. So under transform, active symmetry is on, and right now it's an X. If you do in Y, it will be top down, right? I don't want that. I want it to be in X. So I'm going to go back in and there you go. So we have that. All right. Now, if this is very low poly and I stretch this out to the extreme, right? What you'll see is that the uh, stretching will be going on and it will be very, very ugly, right? So that's where Dynamesh comes in. What we're going to do is we're going to go under, under geometry and we're going to look for, uh, where do you go? Dynamesh right here. And if we turn that on, just by clicking on it, what will happen is you now have a new structure here. It's pretty high. It's 115. So let's bump down that resolution instead of 128. Let's do uh, 64. All right. And now if we move this, you'll see once this starts to stretch out, like this the only thing you do is you hold down control and you just drag a little rectangle on the screen like this and what it will do is it will redraw the wireframe okay now that can come in handy when you just start off in the blocking phase i'll just show you with a kind of a low poly setup here right so i'm going to go in here take a sphere let's go to edit let's go to make polymesh 3d let's Shift it here. There you go. So that's the current setup. I'm going to go to geometry. I'm going to go to dynamesh. Let's set that to, I don't know, make it nice and low. Let's set it to 16. Okay, very crude, right? All right, so increase the size here. B for brush, M for move. Click on move. All right, so see how funky that is, right? Okay, so as soon as I hold on control and drag a little rectangle outside of my object, boom, there you go. All right, so I think that's uh, more than enough for our first video, just as a recap. So you know about how to get a 3D object, right? Which is create that 3D sphere, make sure you click on edit, make sure you click on polymath 3D. You know about your navigation, you know about your material, you know about your color, you know about your brush, you know about your focal shift, you know about your intensity add or subtract. You have a number of these guys you can work with right now. And you have your zebra mesher and you have your dynamesh. Okay. So uh, like I said, more than enough for a first video. If you have any questions or any specific things you want me to cover in ZBrush, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.